Hello and welcome back. Today we were going to work on the Ritual of Magnetism and the Crusher. Unfortunately, I don't have the Ritual Marker Crayon thing, so we're not able to do that. And So instead, we're going to do what these things have marked out here. I'm going to move that blood altar that I have under the ground over there from there to where this gray line is. It's going to be down on Y level 40 or so. And then I've got marked out I started marking out where the uh, beacons were going to come up, and of course it's here, so this whole tower is going to be slid back one. So what I'm going to get started on here originally, or well originally now, is to get the area down there excavated, because I've only got a couple holes down there, and get it all excavated, get an outline where the, uh, the altar is going to go, and if I have any other ideas as to the generic rough shape of how it's going to look, I'm going to get that done. Um, I did leave my altar, or my altar, my orb on the altar all last night. Unfortunately, it didn't do any good because the altar can only charge the orb it can create or below. This one is a tier 5. The altar down there is a tier 4. So, I, instead of gaining power, I actually, over the course of the night, lost about 100,000 because it wasn't able to put any blood back into my network. So that was a little bit of a surprise when I came in looking at my blood and I was like, why is it not where it's supposed to be? And that was why. I'm trying to think if there's anything else we were going to work on. I started with the uh, the alchemy for the uh, the crusher and magnetism because if you feed its orbis terre and terre into the magnetism, it will. Uh, was it? Yeah, magnetism that turns it into a 63 by 63. So I think it, it ends up being like a 64 by 64 total. I believe. Can't remember for sure. But so I've started making those. I've got 16 of the Orbis already and 20 of the Terre, and I started making the a bunch of the simple catalysts and a handful of the strengthened catalysts to get going. Let's see, according to my notes for magnetism. Yeah, magnetism, it's Terre and Orbis Terre. If we pump potentia into it as well, we can get it to mine a block every five seconds. Not sure that's necessary, so we may not do that one. For Crusher, we need to get Orbis Terry, Potentia, and Veritas into it. Or Veritas? It, because that will push it up to a uh, Fortune 3. So that's kind of what I want to get going with these. So eventually, probably in between episodes, I'm going to get all this stuff crafted up because it's a whole lot of running back and forth, getting materials, babysit them because there's no automation in them right now. I don't have any rituals or anything like that. So it's a whole lot of just put something in, take something out, wait a little while. So it's a, a tad grindy and boring. So I want to get that done so it's ready when Newt comes online and I can get that ritual cram back from him. I was going to make one. Unfortunately, it takes four diamonds, and we have three. So I went down looking for diamonds, and of course, when you're looking for them, you never find them. So I didn't find any at all after a couple hundred blocks of digging with my little hammer I've got right here. So I made a decent dent in the uh, landscape down there with no luck. But all right, I'm going to get back to digging... I'm going to excavate all that area once I get some of that cleared out and we can uh, kind of see a general shape of what's going on down there I will be back hello and welcome back all right so got some digging done and as you can see I got the beacons going except for this one which seems to be ah, trees I didn't cut the tree down yet so it hasn't been moved so hopefully that beacon will update there we go four beacons all right, so basic shape. Okay, this is a slime chunk, so you kind of got to be careful. I need to get one of those slime flowers down here. So I got a basic shape. What I'm kind of going for is the mirrored look, so it kind of has that coming down from the ceiling as well. Um, once I get this stuff set up, I'm probably going to fill the floor back in, so you'll just be able to see the beacon poking through. So that's at least kind of what I'm going for right now. I'm hoping I did the math right on this. I don't remember if this is correct. Not sure what I'm going to do for materials yet. I was thinking about actually using uh, marble like we used for the demon right up top. You know, marble pillars, that type of thing. So, you know, the whole shiny, bright, looks horribly expensive type thing. All right, so let's see if I did that right. Nope, still a tier four. I Those might be a little closer. I can't remember for sure. It's been so long since I actually just built one without looking at a diagram. I can't for life me remember. Let's swap this out so we don't have to fly so slow. Yep, that's why. And I have four. I'm going to need more than that. 
So let's make a few more. Swing your blood orb. Uh, some of those. Some of that. Let's make some more runes. So that goes in the middle. These go there. Stone goes around the edge. Eight. That I think is enough. We're not off by much, so that should work. So we'll put this stuff back because this. I need to adjust this thing still. This is kind of a proof of concept to see if I could actually get it to work. But I need to adjust it so it actually takes into account the amount of blood in the altar. Because right now it'll try crafting the highest tier slate when the blood altar only has enough for the third tier. It doesn't work so well. Let's put. So one. Wait, that's not right. There. And. I can't even imagine how many runes this level six is going to have. It's going to be insane. Not even sure what you'd do with that much power. I was kind of waffling back and forth with the ritual of magnetism as to whether or not we should just call down a meteor and then just mine it out. Probably be a little faster, but not quite as neat. It wasn't well, doing it eventually, anyways. We're still at tier four. What did I do wrong? That's diagonal. Just not update yet. Nope, still a tier four. I get that odd feeling this is one of those things that is assuming I wasn't actually recording would be painfully obvious, but now because I'm actually trying to do it while I'm recording is kind of blind to the problem. Alright, let's see here. So it's three out. The beacon is lined up with Oh, ooh. Yep, see, obvious. Alright, so we're gonna need let's just do 16 Oop, need the orb too I don't know if we're going to have enough smooth stone for this yeah it's only got it's right up against the beacon base I've got it one off so we'll see if we can fix that and that's not going to be enough we need more smooth stone Luckily, we've been crafting smooth stone to be making or to making or to make more runes. Oops. Need to get some type of. Right now, that uh, this Batania setup is feeding that furnace with this. Uh, I think it's a uh, yeah, an exo flame. I need to get something set up, maybe with a transfer node to just feed cobblestone into that thing forever. That way, it always it just fills up a barrel of smooth stone, so we've always got it laying around somewhere. It's kind of one of those to-do list things that hasn't been done yet. Let's try this again. This time hopefully it will work. And apparently I left my Google client open. That's marginally deafening. Okay, are we a tier? There we go, tier five. So now, now comes the fun part, excavating the area underneath this thing where the um, suffering well will go, well of suffering. I want to get it as far down from this as it can be because what I, I want to be able to have some golems in this room and not have the ritual eat them. So that's going to be kind of what I'm going to do next is figure out, you know, exactly how far from this the master ritual stone can be and still function. So that's going to be next is I'm going to start digging this area out, see if I can get that area kind of cleared out, figure out where I want the drop shaft to be. I'm thinking it's just going to be directly under the altar here. So it'd be this three by three would go all the way down as far as it could. Um, what, what are we at right now? So the, depending on how deep the well is, it'll make things a little easier because like right now we'd need four levitators. So we'd need 36 of them to uh, do it right. And that would end up being four levels off bedrock. So I'll have to see how we're going to do that because I get the feeling it's going to be probably three, four, five blocks below this level here because that will get it down as low as it needs to be. So I'm going to get going on that, get that all dug out, see if I can figure out what I'm going to do since I haven't quite got a clear picture yet. Once I get that done, I will be back and we'll see what mess I've made. All right, and we're back. Now, do you ever have one of those moments where you're like, this is a great plan, this is going to work out fantastically? And it kind of does, but it kind of doesn't. So what I've got here is I created our Well of Suffering, 
So it's just like we did when we created it before. One thing I, I did run into was um, I got to the point where I'm like, you know what, I want to create this. So I went and I spent some time digging. I went down to Y level 11. I picked a spot. It's like, you know, normally all my tunnels went off to the south. I figured, you know what, I'll take the first spot to the, to the north and I'll start digging. Less than 10 blocks in, I had 15 diamonds. I ran the thing out to about 60 or 70 blocks. By the time I was done, I had 23. Um, five of those diamonds were within three blocks of the initial tunnel. So it was one of those things where it was like, huh, I've been sitting here the whole time. So I now have my own ritual, ritual crayon, which I've got right here. And I upgraded it so it'll do dusk runes. So the dusk rune one, when you create it, is you create the standard one, which is what I need the four diamonds for, and then the, uh, the individual little, uh, elements here. I can't remember if we went over that or not. Um... Let's see this one. Yeah, air. So gas here, lapis, obsidian, magma cream, and then the diamonds and the emerald. And this one was just each one of these is a block of coal on the altar for you know two thousand power. It doesn't really take much to do. And these are just the demonic slates. Just leave it on there until it cooks them up. But I got that made. And I'm like, you know what? I'm on a roll. So I dug my tunnel down all the way to bedrock. I figured it's about it's about twenty five blocks to kind of where I wanted it to end up. So I went down there, I put three arcane levitators, you know, so I made 27 of the things, I put them down there, well technically I made 22, because I didn't have enough of them yet. And I put them all down there, and I got the cursed earth in, I put the conveyor belts in, because I wanted to test it out and see how it works. And everything was working great. And then, for some reason, the witches started throwing potions. And when the witches started throwing potions, they started pissing off the creepers. Which... didn't work very well. It, uh... It started blowing holes and everything. So now I got holes all over the place. So the creepers kind of went berserk and started blowing stuff up. I mean, you can see I got holes everywhere. Then critters started getting bumped off into here and it started not working. And then I had to dig all the way down here. And I'm on, let me back in here. So I, I marked the corners luckily before I went up. So I knew where the edges were. So I dug all the way down. I made four more arcane lanterns and I put them in each of the corners. Because of their, their like 16 block radius, they'll light up. So they got their little light orbs in here, which stopped the spawning. So I could get in here, I could fix the conveyor belts that got blown up by a creeper. I could get the five more conveyor belt or uh, levitators in here. So now I got that in here, which that brings us to creeper proofing this. Because at the moment, there's really no way to do it unless I take obsidian and run it all the way down. Which will work. But you can't see through obsidian, and it's a pain in the butt to move later. So, you know, if you ever want to do anything, obsidian takes a while to break, even with the some of the tools I'm using now, which, you know, granted aren't fantastic. But, you know, I've got, I'm running haste too, and this thing's got haste on it, and this is an, this is an efficiency four, and it still takes a while to crack in a piece of obsidian. So, what I want to do is I'm going to take a sidetrack from this, which actually, until it started exploding, was working really well. I mean, I... Considering this is an unaugmented altar, I went from a hundred thousand, you know, upwards of a million really fast. At least I think I'm up to a million. Let's take a look. Numbers, yeah, a million. I mean, I, I got there really fast. I, I was gonna. I'm just glad I, I noticed the creepers exploding before I put the chunk loader down and logged off for the night, because that would have been a real mess. But I mean, I, I jumped from a hundred thousand to a million in the course of like maybe. 30 minutes before they started detonating and it was just a matter of logging off so they would stop spawning but so if we can get this going get all those sacrifice runes transferred over here you know replace basically every rune on this was a sacrifice rune is the goal and this thing is just going to go nuts and what I want to do is eventually I'll get some capacity increasers and things like that in here because this is basically going to be a charging altar at least that's the intent initially but to fix that one of the things I want to do is I want to be able to ward the tunnel blocks because then what I can do is I can take like clear glass or something and because initially I had, I had glass right here so you can kind of stand you can look at them it's like oh look they're, they're dying you know so you can kind of get an idea of what's going on down there but the glass didn't survive very long and it's kind of a pain to constantly replace it and I was worried they're going to detonate the master ritual stone and all that fun stuff so I want to create a uh, focus of warding the problem is, where is it? Wands. Wands. Uh, you gotta love that pesky thing. See, I don't have it. So, 
what I'm going to do is try, I'm going to get all the rest of the wand caps, or the wand uh, focuses, foci, whatever they're called, get them researched and see if that opens it up. But I get the feeling what I'm going to have to do is maybe make an arcane door and scan that. So if I have to do that, I may just, because you can see the pattern here, I'm, I may just make that offline and just scan it to see if that opens it up. I'm hoping a warded door is, you know, since it's warded, it will give me the unlocked and I need to get the wand cap. But I'm going to get started on that. I'm, like I said, I'm going to get all the, the wand foci research that I can get to. If that doesn't unlock it, I'm going to make a door, scan the door, and we'll go from there. But once I get that thing unlocked so I can make it, I'll start gathering the materials and I'll be back when we can create it because then I can ward those stones and they'll be everything proof because not even a wither can detonate those things. You have to be in creative mode or you have to be the one who planted the block to destroy it. So they're pretty much perfect. So I'm going to get to that and then I will be back. Side jaunt into crazy. These things are uh, happening more and more frequently. And how in the heck did he hit me? He wasn't even near me. But they're, they're spawning a little more frequently than they were before. So I, I'm assuming that means I'm getting a little more bonkers. Because what I've been trying to do is, I, you can't really see it here. I was sitting here on my little whisper weed. I've got a little room right here that I normally lock myself in when I'm just kind of sitting here building up the aspects. Because right now I'm out of air, so I can't do my research until I get more of it. So I was reading in to try and to find out what I could put into the deconstruction table here. Um, here to get air and that's when all of a sudden the world went foggy now grant i prefer the fog this color fog to the the world goes kind of uh you know like the blackness closes in on your eyes type thing where you can only see in the middle of the screen because at least this i can work with in the dark is kind of a bit of a pain but so i don't know i just thought i'd come back since i actually had the recording software running when they attacked me this time so you can kind of see them i haven't seen the spiders yet i i know I, I did come back once and there were red dots all over the map around me but when when I tried to move out to find them I dug myself out and I started looking around they started they started dying so I don't know if they just never actually existed if they were just you know a figment of the imagination type thing or if they were walking off the edge and dying down there I'm not sure but so I, I've only seen two of them I've got the the Thamaria quite a few times the uh, the sunlight burns one luckily it hasn't caused torch light hasn't burned me but sunlight does fry you so eventually we'll get crazy enough that uh, we can get our research done there it goes and then i can get the ritual or something like that to pull the crazy out and we'll go from there but all right back to gathering air all right i found it so apparently it's off the focus of excavation which i never needed until now so it's right there focus of warding which now we've got so to make that I still don't have three air yet. Okay, another star. Okay, all this stuff is workable. The only thing I don't actually have on hand right now is a wither star. Wither star, another star. So let's go over here. This all, all of this stuff is going to get neat or going to get going to need to be moved as well because it's all specifically right now. This chest brings in from the uh, the Wither Skeleton Farm, as well as all of those. So that's gonna have to get taken care of. And now that I think about it, I can transfer some of the, some of those Hopper Hawks over, and they'll help me deal with the uh, cannot aim here. Help me deal with the uh, drops that are gonna be coming out of that thing. It'll allow me to uh, get a little better. Right now, I'm using a vacuum hopper, and it just it just isn't working all that well. So it's it's not necessarily picking up as fast as I'd like it to. And four. And it's dark out. Eventually I'm either gonna have to get night vision or um we may end up recording in the dark a lot. So I'm getting to the point where uh the vampire is getting closer and closer here as far as materials. If I'd started off underground it would have been a lot faster, but unfortunately I didn't, so it's a little bit of a pain. Just because we can. Oh, hey. Oh, he dodged. And creeper. I've been killing them just to see if I offhand get uh, hearts from them because right now we only had one creeper heart and Newt used it up, I think, last night going into the dream realm. So we're out, so we need to find more. One, one side effect we did notice the flying belt that I have right now. 
gives us water breathing and i never realized that that's what did it it just i never even noticed that i was underwater and not suffocating just one of those things i guess when it works you don't really notice that it's working let's slip over to this and we're gonna come way out here where's my sacrificial village here it is there aren't many villagers left in this village might have something to do with the fact that i've killed like 16 withers here or something like that I can't imagine that that would have any effect on the village population whatsoever. But let's just kill another one here. They're actually pretty easy to kill now. Except I'm not wearing my boots, so this might get interesting. I'm wearing the plastic boots to walk on these conveyors. Come on. So you can see, it's just this crossbow recoils so quickly, and it's more, it's not really that big a deal. The trick is just not flying too close to the base. And, Aaron's skull takes something out of us. That would just be bad. Let's see. Oh, yes. Okay, cool. I didn't realize that, that I didn't see him turn pink for a second, which usually indicates that he's ready for a uh, melee. You can see he's hurting me, but he's not killing me. Did we get our star? Yes, we did. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to go gather up the necessary materials, get all the components necessary, because I get the feeling there's going to be some Eider, or not Eider, some uh, Essentia in there that I don't necessarily have enough of. So I'm going to go get all those materials ready, and as soon as I've got the infusion ritual ready, I will be back. Alright, I think we're ready to create this. So, the basic pattern we've got, we need Cognito, Ordo, Terra, and Tutaman? I don't know, something like that. So let's see, we got Ordo, we got a full jar. Full jar, almost full jar of Terra. More than enough Cognito. Full jar of whatever the heck that is. And our pattern. So we need some Quicksilver, Order Shards, Earth Shards, and Nether Quartz. So we've got Nether Quartz, Order Shards, Earth Shards. Make sure that's the right order, okay. So that should do it for that. Before I push the button on that, I want to clean something up real quick that was kind of a side effect of getting some of these materials, and that is this leaning tower of arbor here, because this stuff is all but useless, especially in that volume. So to take care of that, what we're going to do here is we're going to make, we're going to make, where's alchemy, a void jar. So we want to kind of want to get rid of some of that stuff. So we've got our material here for a void, void jar, just some blaze powder, obsidian, standard boarded jar. So got that now. Now what we also want to create is stomach tinker, I think. Was it tinker? Yeah. An essentia funnel, which will allow us to drain one jar into another. So I'm hoping it'll allow us to drain a standard jar into the void jar. So stone and thomium. So stone and thomium and wand. So one goes here. Now for this to work, it gets placed on top of a hopper. So where do we want to put it? Let's just put it over here. This whole room needs to get revamped as far as what's in it. So hopper and that. Now we're going to come over here, go up here. Come on, can I fit there? All right, perfect. jar should be more than enough of this stuff now if this works let's see if I can remember how to do this okay even drain out even more and empty so you right click to put the jar on it you see now this one's full but now the real trick is when I take this one off okay perfect it's empty well it's supposed to be empty Every now and then I've found that sometimes these jars, when you pull it off of here, it, they're empty, but something to do with the way this thing functions, it still doesn't necessarily see them as empty. So you kind of have to, you know, you right click, you put them back. Now they didn't stack in my inventory. But now we break them, and after placing them, now they'll stack properly. So that'll work. So now what we can do, empty that one. Oop, didn't give it enough time. So now what I can do is this has arbor in it. 
so whenever I have a recipe or like you know a, a distillation that has arbor in it, I can just put this jar under the machine, and it will just it'll always keep 64 in it. Everything beyond 64 just gets trashed, because you know we really don't need that much of this stuff. Once I get a area, I know how I'm going to set up the Essentia system. I just haven't found a place to put it yet. And what I'm going to end up doing, let's see if I can find it here. Uh, that's not alchemy. This is alchemy. Where? That's not where they are. Are they in here? Nope. Here? No. It's around here somewhere. There. Nope. That's a mnemonic matrix. Okay, where is it? There's a buffer you can make, and I just don't know which one of these things it's under. But basically, it's a it's kind of like a pipe, but it has a small kind of internal reservoir, and it can hold multiple types of essentia as long as they don't exceed that reservoir total. So what you can do is you can have a line of those all told that, you know, you always push your essentia in this direction. And what you end up doing is you have jars attached to those buffers that are labeled. So what it'll do is it'll just kind of constantly push it down the line until it finds a jar it can go into or it hits the end. And then for every one of these, every type you have like a normal jar here and that goes through it and then you also have a void jar. So when the normal jar fills up, it'll fill the void jar and then it'll just start voiding whatever's left over. So that kind of gives you a, a clean way of of storing what you need without having to kind of go all excessive as far as you know the piping everywhere constantly switching bottles and you know kind of get away from that at least that's the hope we'll see if it pans out that way in the end but like I said I have to find a room for it it's not going to take up a terrible amount of space but I mean as you can see just with the few infusions we've done so far this is the different types of essential we've come up with so I've started stacking them as it gets to the point where there's too much except for the meat one here. Kind of ran out of room. So that I'll void a bunch of that as well too. Are we empty? We are good. So now we can put these back. It just kind of cleaned things up a little bit. Oops. Because it was, it was bugging me. So now we'll take this jar. And we'll put it right there. Now... Where did I leave you? All labels we don't need right now. All right, we've got my spare materials. Let's see what happens. The labels you can use if you take a, a file of the uh, the material, you can combine it with a label, and you can create a label for that material or for that essentia, or you can slap a blank label on a jar. What that does is it tells the system that even if this jar is empty, this is what goes in it. That's kind of how that system would work as far as the buffers go. You'd have each jar labeled so the system knew what was allowed to go in it. And it would just kind of progress along that way. So almost done. Nothing horrible. This is a moderate. So I was kind of expecting some lightning, but I haven't seen any yet. Almost. I'll start taking them. Oh, there it goes. Hopefully it already took that piece. I'm guessing it did. If not, we've got a spare. So if it stops, all of a sudden it doesn't seem to do anything. We'll put another piece of another quartz right there. But I get the feeling... Come on. Yep, see it popped that off. And did you see right there how it took more? It took more. Because that piece was missing, it, it takes more of the materials to keep the system running. Which, if you're not ready for that, that'll cause a significant amount of uh, instability and it can start causing flux as well, which is a royal pain. So now we've got that. Put all our toys away here. Alright, now the real question. Oh, what is the button? All right, let me find the button. I was looking through the key combinations already, trying to figure out where the wand switch button was, and I didn't be able to find the cap change yet. So I'm going to find that, and then I'll be back, and we'll see how this thing works. And, you know, it'd be neat one of these times if you turned around when it did that, and there was, like, a little set of red eyes off in the distance. That'd be kind of cool, but nope. All right, I'll be back. All right, and we're back. Are you ready to be horribly amazed? Apparently the control is called change wand focus. So now we can change to our focus. Now with this, we right-click. 
those secrets are really bad. That flower is so much more informative. So now, you can see it with the wand. Can't see it. Can't see it. Now, can't break it, which is fantastic. You can sit here forever. It will just keep doing that. Switch back to the wand, bonk it again, and it breaks. It is a fantastic thing. These blocks are wither proof, so that's one of the things that's on this list now that I've got this thing, is a wither killing box. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come all the way down here. We're going to switch to our hammer, and we're going to sit here for 20 minutes while this breaks. And slow. Okay, there we go. Now, oh, wow, almost broke the ritual. That would have been bad. Oh, that's right, I'm within the range of the levitators there. Levitators can't go through solid blocks, so when the obsidian was there, you could walk across it just fine. But as soon as you break the obsidian, not so much, as you can see. Slime chunk, so free slime balls. Now back to what we were doing, which is breaking this. And we don't need these anymore. Oh, okay. But we're just... Oh, of course it counts as flying, so it messes everything up. There. There. We're just going to break this glass. I don't have anything silk touch yet, so... And we're going to put more glass... Let's make that stop being annoying for a little bit. Eight, nine. Yay, I can count. Now we're going to go down, down, down. Come on. Down faster. One, two. Oops, not good enough. Ah, whatever, it works. And, whoa. Here, here. Here and here. Okay, now I can fly. Okay, that's weird. Huh. Must be close enough to the edge there that it still allows it to work. Alright, so back to what we were doing here. Here. Over there. Now this is still going to be able to push us when we stand on it, but... Am I out of power? Can you not... Seriously, you cannot ward glass? Oh. Oh well. I only need it for stone anyways. Alright, well what I'm going to do then, since this isn't going to be near as interesting as I was hoping it would be, clear out this obsidian here, get this turned back to stone. Probably just going to cobble the whole thing all the way down since you're not going to be able to see it anyways. I'm, I want to say that there is... Let's take a look. Yeah. Right there. Warded glass. What is that from? So it's from straight from Thomcraft. I wonder where it's at. Because that would be why we can't do that. It's because there's warded glass. So it's probably over here somewhere. We probably, all, what I'll end up doing is I'll probably will need to craft one of these. It's probably just something I don't have knowledge of yet. Because I would like to have glass right there so you can kind of see them because they'll, what they'll do is they'll come up and they'll slam into whatever level I put here because this goes down 10 which now that I did this I don't remember where the level was supposed to be I think it was actually it won't matter if I ward this stuff I can put it right up to the top alright so I'm going to clear this out I think I'm going to do this level right here so the level I'm standing on will be the cap so I'm gonna break all this obsidian I'm gonna get this thing solid all the way down probably with cobble or smooth stone whatever and then ward everything all the way up that way if they decide to start doing that again they can blow up to their hearts content it won't matter once that's done I'm gonna take those lights off down there so this thing starts spawning and then I will be back alright so we have got you'll see here everything above me is glowing everything down the wall here is glowing and get off of that thing. Alright, so we're going to take our wand. Wrong button. So I've got it bound to F. So F brings up the uh, the spindle here. And then Shift F, when I have it, takes the wand cap off. Alright, so we've got all that. So now we just need to take our stone. Put it there. And I do want to keep this area lit up once these things once the little wisps go out. So we'll have to do that. Yeah. So 
put some torches under where these things were. I did throw torches down as I was building it, but just in case, because I don't want anything spawning outside. So you can hear they're already starting to spawn. So you can see them there, and then they get shoved up the tube there, unless they see me. So now, we go all the way up here. We hear that wonderful sound. And as you can see, I, I did that there. This, I, what I want to do is I want to replace this uh, this cobblestone here with warded glass once I get to that point. The obsidian doesn't actually... Okay, so technical difficulties. Apparently I hit the record button when I did not mean to, so everything was toggled out of whack there. So I made a few changes since we accidentally cut there. I raised the roof up a little bit. This is all warded, same as before. Um, I just widened this out. I've got the hopper hawk in there. I've got a little mana pool feeding it. And this is feeding into the ender chest that uh, the hopper hawks down there were feeding into. So it still uses the same filter system that it was using before. So at least that uh, that didn't have to be changed all that much. What I did end up needing to do is I, I've been having to add more barrels as we find more of the loot drops because we weren't getting skeletons and spiders and things like that on a, on a frequent basis before so we didn't have to deal with their drops whereas now we do so we're gonna have to worry about the uh, the string we're gonna have to worry about like the wither dust from you know, the witch cats when we get them in there the skulls um, and I did find something out apparently if you shift lock a uh, empty barrel it stays empty which is really neat. I did not know that. So I added a few file cabinets for the various bits, which I don't have that many of. One thing I did find that I forgot to mention before, I don't know where this came from, but this showed up in here. So something in here must have dropped it, probably like a peck or who knows what was in there. But this means we can make that taint flower. So that's on the list now of things that I want to get done. So we can hopefully get that taken care of. But it looks like we're doing okay Ooh, those are gonna be a pain I am gonna to have to start checking this at least to keep track of it until I can get it moved to a more permanent location because right now it's it's not exactly a, uh, a permanent setup at least that's kind of the goal so I don't want to put too much time into it but now that I've cut back up to where I was supposed to be when I initially turned my recording off we are going to uh, I think we're gonna end here try and get the magnetism running next episode since now I do have the the ritual marker and and things like that and so hopefully we can get that done and I had a witch spawn up there I have no idea how and uh, we'll go on from there but uh, thank you for watching